Loveland Magazine TV videos are brought to you by the generous support of MoveToLoveland.com. Hello, Loveland Magazine viewers. Cassie Mattia here for another episode of the Table of Discussions. Now, as you can see, we have a full house today. We have a furry guest that is Zumi. Um, I am here with Devin Smith from the League of Animal Welfare. She is the executive director and Ronnie Valley, who is the enrichment coordinator. Um, Ronnie, tell me a little bit about what that means. Uh, so I do training with the behavioral dogs that we have, as well as just try to keep the dogs as happy as possible in a otherwise pretty stressful situation. Um, I do evaluations so that we can get dogs matched to the best homes as well, which is a very important part of what we do. Excellent. Tell me about Zumi before we even get into anything. Cause I know people are like, Oh my gosh, yes. you said 86 pounds. First of all, yes. wow. Yeah. 86 pounds of love <laughs> right here. Tell me about the breed and the story um, and all that jazz. He's primarily great Pyrenees, but he has lots of other little breeds in there. He is a 2% Pomeranian for Pomeranian lovers. Nice. Um, but he, he came from a case, uh, where he was at a rescue that, um, was cited for neglect, so he kind of got a rough start mm. and spent a year in a foster home and um, unfortunately just had, had dealt with a lot of anxiety and things like that that have with his guarding breeds. Um, just just led to a hard time, but now we've worked a lot with Zumi. Zumi has his best friends. He's fantastic with dogs. Um, that's really been his saving grace. Um, he is one of our playgroup rock stars and um, yeah, he's just looking for a for a home now with with maybe some doggies to play with all the time. Okay, so yes, up for up for adoption. Yeah, mm -hmm. I love to hear that. <laughs> so okay, so let's get rocking and rolling. So League of Animal Welfare, you guys are over in Batavia. We are awesome. Yep. So you guys have one of the longest histories. We were just talking about this, me and mm -hmm. Devin, of anything. Mm -hmm. um, it's unreal. Mm -hmm. I I know they started talking about this concept in 1942, and then it was founded in 1949. Mm -hmm. So I know you're privately funded, nonprofit, and you, you basically provide care for unwanted, lost, and neglected cats and dogs. Cats and dogs, true. Which yeah. is awesome. Um, am I reading this right? More than 1,500? Yeah. Is this, it more than that now? It's more. This year we will do about 1,800. I, I say Ooh. do. We'll take and care for and adopt out about 1,800 animals. Dang. Yeah. I, I love that. Mm -hmm. Now, I love getting fixated on missions. That's mm -hmm. like my thing, you know, marketing background, PR. Mm -hmm. So your mission, and I love this, is to reduce the number of homeless cats and dogs in greater Cincinnati by providing a compassionate, no-kill animal shelter and programs that promote responsible pet care. Yeah. Talk to me about that, how you came yeah. up with the mission, how you came up with the vision. Um, yeah. And you are one of the largest non-kill shelters in the area. Yeah, in our area, yeah, that's true. Um, Cincinnati is really blessed though to have even our, what we call open admission shelters, mm -hmm. so your county shelters um, do not euthanize for space. So that's amazing. We are what you call a limited admission shelter, meaning okay. we can kind of control our pet population. So for instance, we do not employ the county dog warden to pick up strays. Um, so we control our population, but we're working really hard to, to save more animals so that our county shelters are not quite so overwhelmed. So most of our dogs, hi handsome, most of our dogs come from other shelters. Um, our cats uh, in Claremont County, our cats do come from the public because okay. our county shelter does not take in cats at all. Um, now why is that? Uh, you know, it's an interesting question. <laughs> in Ohio, um, county shelters don't have to take in cats by Ohio state law. Uh, and it usually comes down to a funding issue. So okay. in Ohio state law, the funding that funds your county shelters comes from what the um, Ohio Revised Code calls the Dog and Kennel Fund, okay. which is basically when you pay for your license for your dog, that money goes into the Dog and Kennel Fund, and that money funds your local shelter. Um, so that's not us. That would be, for instance, in Hamilton County, that is um, Cincinnati Animal Care. In our county, it's Claremont County Animal Shelter. Okay. Um, and But it doesn't provide for cats. So you cannot use that money to, to provide for cats. So That's a shame. Yeah. Wow. So the League for Animal Welfare has picked up, kind of picked up the ball, the drop ball on that um, for Claremont County residents. Oh, so, that's yeah. excellent. So we take in about 600 dogs and about 1,200 cats every year. Dang, yeah, good for you guys. <laughs> oh, I love that. Now, let's let's jump into adoption because I know after seeing Zoomy over here, people are like, how the heck can I get involved, yeah. um, especially with your guys' mission? So tell me about how the, um, I know you have trained adoption counselors. We do. So tell me a little bit about the adoption process, how people can 
you know, get going with that, you know, the pricing, what you guys offer, that kind of thing. Yeah, absolutely. So we have what you call an open adoption process, meaning we are trying to remove barriers to getting a pet in your home. There are a lot of homeless pets um, and there are a lot of loving homes um, that could provide just a great family. So right. what that looks like is we don't have a bunch of requirements, right? We don't have a fence check and a home check and all of that because right. right. that is a barrier to getting a pet. Um, in your loving family. So you come to the league and you can do that by appointment or you can walk in during our open hours. Um, you meet our pets uh, and that can look a few different ways. If you want to come in specifically to meet Zumi, great, we can do that. Um, if you want to just come in and kind of hang out in our cat area, you can do that. Um, and if you fall in love with a pet, you just have a conversation with our adoption counselor to make sure it's a good fit for you. So for instance, Zumi is anxious with new people. Yes. Um, and so he is going to need a home, but loves, loves, loves other dogs. So an ideal home for him is going to have other dogs, probably not small children, just because small children make dogs anxious anyway. And he's all dogs. Jeez. Serve. Yeah. <laughs> all of them. <laughs> True, story. True story. We love small children. We, we do. And we have plenty of dogs uh, that do great no, in those homes. <laughs> Um, yeah, but for Zoomy, not a great fit. So we just have that conversation. Is your home a good fit for Zoomy? And is Zoomy a good fit for your home? Because we want um, we want you to succeed with your new pet. Hello. Oh, <laughs> um, baby. So we have that conversation. Usually the whole process only takes about an hour. Oh, wow. Um, it can take longer if you want to visit with lots of dogs or cats. Um, but usually they fall in love pretty quickly. And we are able to get a pet in that home fairly quickly. Yeah. Awesome. So yeah. uh, I, I read correctly. So you do the microchipping. We do. The vaccinations, yeah. um, vet checkup, yep. mm -hmm. heart warm testing, and uh, medication. Yep. Spraying or neutering. Yep. And you also, so you do a puppy training deposit? What is What does that yeah. look like? You do a little bit of puppy training before we, you? Well, we started this, I think, two years ago. Um, any dog, any puppy under six months, what we found was puppies were getting adopted because they're adorable. Um, <laughs> yes. but puppies are, um, difficult. Yes. Yes, <laughs> so they are. We found that puppies were getting adopted really quickly. They were going to families that weren't quite sure how to train them. Mm. Um, and then they were coming back to us as one year old dogs with serious behavioral issues because Ooh. in that critical period where they needed to be socialized with new people and other dogs, they weren't getting that. Um, and then the family was overwhelmed by the behavioral issues that they hadn't addressed early on, and they were coming back to us. Mm. And at that point, it becomes really difficult to address. So this is a way that we encourage people to get professional help. Dog training is hard. Yeah, yeah, it is. <laughs> but there are lots of professionals that can help you. Right. Ronnie has done dog training for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, now she's in sheltering, but um, used to do private dog training. Um, so what we do is we have a refundable deposit as part of our puppy adoption fee. It's only for puppies under six months. Um, so you pay an additional $150. Once you get that dog into some socialization or training class and you complete that, we refund you that $150. Okay. Yeah. That's a, oh, yeah. I love that because there's a lot of uh, pet owners out there. Um, first time pet owners mm -hmm. that they'll get a puppy mm -hmm. thinking that it's going to be completely easy yes. and a little it's bit work. later. Yeah. It's work. But I, I assume that's probably a problem of as to why maybe dogs get abandoned or yeah. get dropped off because people are like, this is too much. So, yeah, yeah. Oh, I love Absolutely. that. Yeah. So one of the um, programs that I saw that you do that really hit home was the none left behind program. Um, adopting a special needs pet. Yeah. That means so much to me because I know if, if my dog Dean, who's going to be 13, has a bunch of different issues, if he was, you know, out there for some reason, yeah. it would be rough. So mm -hmm. tell me a little bit about that program and kind of why you started it. Yeah. None Left Behind was started um, before I arrived at the league. So um, I think it's going on a decade now. And it is a program specifically for pets who have either medical or behavioral needs that might prevent them from being adopted quickly. Mm. Um, so right now, um, actually, in fact, Rascal the cat just got adopted yesterday. He was one of our None Left Behind oh. cats. He's diabetic. And okay. uh, having a diabetic pet, it's a commitment in terms of your time but it's expensive also. Right. Um, and so what that program pays for is his medication for his life uh, so that the adopter did not have to worry about that. Um, and it was funny, you know, sometimes we don't immediately see the impact of that program. The adopter had met Rascal 
um, months ago and was interested because he had a great personality, mm. but knew he was diabetic and wasn't quite sure about taking that on. Um, and then one of the adoption counselors said, oh, well, do you know he's an unleft behind cat? And he adopted him like that. So it really does Jeez. make a difference in terms of, and I think Rascal was with us probably for six months or so. Wow. Um, yeah. So it does make a difference. So certain pets are selected because we know whatever the condition is will make it hard for them to get in a home. Right. Um, and once they're on that None Left Behind program, we cover the cost of care for whatever it is that made them. And that's the red flag for people. Mm -hmm. That's what sets exactly. us apart from anything yes. else. That, yes. what, what a benefit. Yeah. That, and also, you know, um, you provide provisions if they have like a dietary restriction or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Wow. It just depends on what the um, issue is that's preventing the pet from getting in a home. So in Rascal's case, it was the expensive medication. So we cover that and we cover blood work Dang. for his lifetime. Um, Which is costly. Shoot. It is costly. costly. Yeah. It is expensive. Yeah. And, um, you know, for another pet, it might be a behavioral issue. And so in that case, we might provide ongoing training um, or advice for that. So it just depends what the issue is. So every pet that's in that program has a tailored um, uh profile that goes with them okay yeah keep that in mind loveland the special needs pets they need yeah. you too yeah. okay they need um, you most amen so, amen yeah, yeah. yeah. so the cool thing about you guys is in addition to having a no-kill shelter you also have a clinic we do which is yeah pretty rare awesome. i would say it's so awesome. Opened in the fall of 2019. Obviously, COVID happened. And then you guys, yeah. But Closed. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Then you got things rocking and rolling back in 2022. Yeah. So yeah. tell me about what your clinic offers. I know it's a yeah. preventative services for the most part. Yeah. Tell me what it offers. Um, is yeah. it is it in the same facility? It is. Okay. It is. Which is yeah. very convenient. Okay. It is. Tell me about yeah. that. Um, so right now, we offer a number of programs. The biggest one is our spay-neuter program. Mm. We want to make spay neuter affordable for everyone. Yes. Um, and so we provide spay neuter um, anywhere from it can be as low as $25 or for a cat or $50 for a dog, um, or in some cases free if that is also out of range, but you are wanting to fix your pet, we will work with you to figure that out. Can I ask you really yeah. quick, and I hate to interrupt you, but this is a huge thing that everybody has asked about in the pet community. Why is it important for dogs cats one or the other to get sprayed or neutered yeah um for lots of reasons the reason that we in sheltering care most about is there are more homeless animals in shelters than there are um people to adopt them so animals are euthanized in shelters every single day because there are not homes to adopt them for no other reason than that um, and especially right now, we're in a dog crisis um, in shelters right now. And mm -hmm. so there are more dogs in shelters there were in 2023 and continuing into 24 than we've ever seen. And so we are having, not at the League for Animal Welfare, we yeah. don't have to euthanize for space, but shelters who have not had to euthanize for space in decades are euthanizing for space oh, because gosh. there are not homes for them. So every dog that's born is another home right. that we have to figure out how to how to place that right. animal. So. Right. Um, unwanted litters mean that's one less home for a dog that's in a shelter or one more dog coming into our shelter that we just don't have space for. Oh. Um, and that goes for cats as well. So that is the reason that sort of drives us. Right. Um, but there are also, also health benefits. So well, we kind of like breaking mm -hmm. bad habits. Like there's certain yes. habits mm -hmm. that, yep. that help. So for cats, spraying is terrible and smelly and awful. Yeah. And it stops that um, when... Um, cats going to heat, they yowl, They're, and dogs, of course, bleed, so, um, and you have to, so dogs can be messy when they go into heat. Um, territorial behaviors like fighting, especially mm -hmm. for male dogs PMS. or male cats. <laughs> sure. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so there are super annoying behaviors that this nips yeah. in the bud. Yeah. Um, and, but then there are life-threatening things like um, pyometra is an infected uterus. Oof. We see that a lot in older cats and dogs who have been unspayed. Um, if your dog ends up with pyometra, you're looking at about a $4,000 emergency oh my surgery gosh. or they die. Those are your two choices. Um, so we actually get calls all the time about dogs that have pyometra, panicked owners who can't afford to take them to an emergency vet, begging us to do the surgery. We do it as often as we can. Um, but once they have that condition, that surgery is more dangerous. Um, they can, even after the uterus is removed, they can die of infection infection post-operatively. Mm. Um, testicular cancers, mammary cancers are all associated with unspayed and unneutered animals. So there are lots of life-threatening conditions too. 
Okay, so one of the most interesting things that obviously existed, but I didn't know really what it was that you guys do is TNR, which is the trap neuter return. Um, it's a humane method to reduce the free roaming cat population in our communities. So tell me a little bit about that and why it's so important. Yeah, it's important because there are thousands of cats living outside um, and um, cats reproduce quickly. So they can have up to three litters a year and usually have four to six kittens a litter. Um, and they start reproducing when they are as young as four months old. So that's a lot of cats to have outside um, unwanted. So it's hard for the cats, right? That's a tough existence for them. It's difficult. You know, there's predation in our neighborhoods of birds and things like that. So um, we're all, whether you love cats or hate cats, trying to reduce the number of homeless cats. So TNR is how we do that humanely. Um, so we trap them and we fix them. So they are going to live out their natural life outside, but they're not going to continue to reproduce and contribute to a population of unwanted homeless animals. Right. And you said that's completely free, which is... It is that's, free. Mm -hmm. I'm sure a lot of people don't yeah. know that. Yeah. So in our community, we have a wonderful foundation called the Joni Bernard Foundation. Uh, Joni Bernard was a local Cincinnatian who died in 2011. She left all of her money... Um, to provide for cat care in the Cincinnati region. So at the League for Animal Welfare, mm -hmm. at Ohio Alley Cat Resource, and at um, UCAN, the United Coalition for Animals, um, trap neuter return surgery. So the, the spay neuter surgery to fix those cats is free. Yeah, and that we vaccinate them and fix them. And so you just bring them to us, we do all of that for free, and then you return them to where they're living. See? And, yeah. And you got your good deed in for the day, too. Easy peasy, and you did a good thing. <laughs> exactly. Absolutely. Um, so the last few subjects I want to get into is really donating and volunteering. Um, but before we dive into that, you know, we have first-person experience here. So with volunteering, is that how you got started in helping with the League of Animal Welfare? Or what was your journey? And tell me why you think more people should volunteer or get involved with the pet community. Well, I've always been a little bit involved with shelters as a trainer. Um, so people who bring dogs to me often were shelter dogs before that. So do you that still was, have that business? Um, no, I, I still do some private training, but primarily I am focused on the, the league okay. currently. Gotcha. Um, but that, it was something where I saw shelter dogs and I saw kind of what the aftermath of that was and how they needed help acclimating into a home. So it's always been an interest of mine. Um, and I was transitioning careers anyway, and so this opened up, and it was it really opened my world up. I had no idea what the, what the sheltering world truly was until I was in it, and um, once I started, I would never go back. I don't think that I could ever have a, a different training job than what I, I do now. It's really where my heart is. Um, How long have you been doing it? Uh, it's only been two years now. Two at the, years, at the but league. you're in love yes, with it. Yes, it, yeah. it has been, my, and I utilize all other kinds of training I've ever done. So it's, yeah. it's a way, yeah. it's it's also just interesting in that way. Um, and I think it it is absolutely one of the most important things to have volunteers who really do have a heart for the animals. That's... It's it's not um, it's not always easy to come in and volunteer. It's not always, you know with schedules or with because it's emotionally Ta hard to yep, see and dogs. Get bonded. Well. Yep. Yes. Yep. To yep. see them go through this is hard, but that is what keeps these guys going while they're there, and that's why we do what we do. Now, do you have a lot of volunteers right now that work at the shelter, or we we, we do luckily have a very big volunteer base. That's so, awesome. Um, and getting more and more all the time of, of what we call the regulars, you know, people yeah, yeah, that we yeah, can yeah. kind of count on to get certain dogs out. Right. Um, and, and that's really helpful to our enrichment program. They're really, we couldn't have one without them. Well, thank you for being an advocate. I oh, appreciate that. I mean, there more people need to get involved in the pet community. Um, I truly believe that. that, that I mean, I have a, a pit bull lab and you know, I've been doing more and more research and I know that breed uh, significantly. So it, it really touches me that you're doing what you're doing. Of course, you too, Devin, but <laughs> being, being someone like you that, that, that is really dedicated only after two years, like that's, that's so crazy. Um, so let's, let me tell you a little bit about the volunteering. So um, to be a shelter volunteer, uh, you have to sign up for orientation. Is that correct? 
Yes, we have volunteer opportunities. <laughs> Asterisk. Yeah. We yeah. have a lot of opportunities where you can work with animals that you don't have to go through orientation okay. first. But okay. in order to be able to do everything at the shelter, right. you can start with orientation. Okay. Yes, absolutely. And now, and the, and to do the orientation piece, they'll contact Carrie at flaw.org. L-F-A-W. L-F-A-W. Okay, dot org. Yep. Awesome. Yep. And then it says sessions are offered on the second Sunday and fourth Saturday of each month. Yes. Um, You do have to be 18. Is that correct? Or have a parent or guardian with you? Yes. You can be under 18, but you have to be with a parent. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, we love our kid volunteers. Oh, we really I encourage that. that. Mm-hmm. And that, um, I feel like that's good for the kids. It's great for the kids. It's great for the animals. Yeah. Because they get used to, to having kids. kids. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. It's great for everybody. Yeah. Yep. So. I, I have a couple of cool. kids who yeah. come in and they get write notes on the dogs for me. And it's mm-hmm. my, it's one of my favorite things in the world. Oh like it, my it's, gosh. It, and it's actually helpful. It has helped me many times to know more about the dogs. So. Oh, and I'm sure they get so invested too. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I I love that. It's adorable. And it also tells us, like, is this pet going to succeed with kids in the home? Right. That makes so, sense. Yeah. 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 So some of your areas where volunteers are needed, I'm going to go through that list so you guys can hit you guys up after this yeah. and get volunteers. So walking and socializing dogs, yeah. um, socializing cats, um, assist at an off-site adoption event, socialize and clean off-site kitty condos at local retail adoption partners. Now, I will say this. Mm-hmm. Side note. This is how I found out about you guys. Oh, really? Was this Oasis? Oh, yes. My we boyfriend love used to work them. for them, and his we favorite part was walking and socializing the dogs because they did that. Was it a we monthly? We love them. Yes. Yes. <laughs> They're like, doing an adoption event for us on July 13th, too. That's literally They're how I found awesome. out about you guys, and he goes, Honey, you should do a story. And I was like, <gasps> and that's, yeah. We love Oasis yeah. Turf and Tree. They are great to us and our dogs. Oh, they, yeah, yeah they love yeah. it too. Um, so there's plenty of examples, volunteer examples, that I'll go ahead and put in the article um, that you guys do. Um, for example, First Sunday Hikes, um, corporate events, like we said, um, Pet Food Pantry, mm-hmm. which that's definitely yeah. um, the, the spay and neuter clinic. Yeah. And, um, you know, retail adoption partners going in. It says, like, Petco and that kind of thing, which I would want to take all of them home. (laughs) You can. (laughs) I know. I don't think my apartment would let me, though. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, So the next thing I want to go into is Home for the Holidays Fostering Program. Oh, my gosh. When I saw that, like, I want to do it. That. Yeah. So basically, you match right with a holiday Mm -hmm. foster pet to spoil over the Christmas, and it's all animals over six months old. Mm Mm-hmm. That and it's just That's over awesome. the Chris, over the holidays. We do it. Um, we have done it over Thanksgiving before, but primarily it's over Christmas. Yeah, and so it's usually depending on what day Christmas falls. It's usually um, about a three to four day foster period. So you pick up a couple days before, keep over Christmas, and then return. That is after. such a good idea. It's so cool. Did you guys just it's kind so of create cool. that yourselves? A lot of um, shelters do something similar. It's great for our staff because staff have to be there 365 yeah, days a year yeah. because we have to care for the animals. So. Right. Um, we don't get Christmas off. We don't get Thanksgiving off. Um, and so it helps to have fewer animals to care for. So it's great for the staff, uh, but it is great for the animals. So animals get to go home for that. We have a foster program all the time. Yes, yes. Um, but people love that program. So animals that have never been in foster get to go into foster for that. And you probably learn the most about dogs and foster. Yes. Yeah. We, we get fantastic notes. There's it, fostering is just super important for us because we, we see dogs at their most stressed getting to find out what they're actually like in a home. That's invaluable. Helpful for, sure. for you guys. Yeah. yeah very very helpful. So. Yeah. Oh gosh. Yeah. So oh, it's a I really cool love program. Love that program. <laughs> and anyone can sign up. Um, and so if you have, if you have pets in the home or kids or you have anything that we need to be mindful of, um, if you tell us that in advance, wonderful. We'll find the right pet. If you walk in and tell us at the door, Ronnie's going to be like, not a big deal. I will figure it out right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, oh. And we just convert because we really, um, and how lovely to have like a big dog like Snoopy under your tree. I know. Tree. Keep that in mind, guys. I mean, that's just a great, that's a great awesome. Christmas miracle, yeah. as you will. Um, now, you guys have merchandise as well. Um, it is um, Bonfire is you what you guys use. Yeah. Um, we do use Bonfire. We have some stuff at the league, and then you can always get it on Bonfire. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Aw- and we have some really fun, funny I stuff. I saw I know. like little quirky, a little risque. Yeah. A little, yeah. It's fun. Yeah. It's fun. So support it's and do the funds go towards the league? They do. Mm-hmm. Awesome. So yeah, do that, guys. And then the other thing I want to talk about is bottle feeding. That 
This sounds yeah. like my heart is going to just melt off my chest. It's like an explosion. Oh, my gosh. I should have brought some bottle feeders. I know. I would have been like. Eh. You would have been a melty <laughs> mess, though. Yes, um, I would have. Yeah, it's it's for dogs and cats, but we see far more cats. So it's for orphaned dogs and cats, yeah. puppies and kittens, um, where mom either is unable to nurse them or is gone for whatever reason. Um, it's primarily kittens that we see. We've had a few bottle feeding puppies, um, but mostly it's kittens. Uh, it's a lot. We get a lot. <laughs> I'm and sh- it's round the clock care. You have to feed them. So kittens wean at about five weeks old. So okay. for the first five weeks, you have to feed them like mama would feed them. So you've got a little a little syringe or a little bottle, and, and every two to three hours you have to feed them. And so people come in and, and do they that. They actually take them home and do it at home. And we do have, oh my gosh. Uh, yeah, the people who do this are, are amazing human die. beings. And mm-hmm. we actually have a bottle feeding class coming up um, on April 18th at the Perfect Day Cat Cafe. So we teach can they, people. Can you sign up through you or? You can sign up through us. Um, yep, it's on our website or you can just show up. Okay. Um, and we will have kittens. Oh, so I'll gosh. see you there. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so last thing, um, obviously, so the League of Animal Welfare is located at 4193 Taylor Road in Batavia, Ohio. Yep. Um, you guys are basically 12 to 5, except closed on Thursdays, and then it looks 12 to 7 on Wednesdays. And Mondays, yep. And Mondays, okay. Yep. Um, so last but not least, I do just want to hit really quick on donating. So you can donate online, um, by phone, um, by mail, or by stock or through your employer, which I thought was really interesting. Mm-hmm. I, I like that. So the one program you guys have is Hope 365. Yeah. So ten dollars a month, which is thirty any cents a day. Yep. Well, you can any do amount of more. Month. Yeah, but... it's a monthly donation okay. program. Okay, awesome. Yeah. And mm-hmm. that goes towards the homeless cats and dogs um, yeah. in your no kill shelter, finding a home. It costs us about a million and a half dollars a year to do this. So every year we have to raise a million and a half dollars, and it's only from private donations. But yeah. like like it yeah. says here, and this really puts it into perspective, ten dollars a month. That's just thirty cents a day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. I yeah. mean, so, and yeah. then you also have the shelter sponsorship. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's a $500 donation and you can sponsor the care and upkeep of a cat room or dog kennel for one year. That's excellent. Yeah. I love that. Um, the shelter wish list. Now this is very important. This keeps Mm -hmm. your supply shelf stocked. Mm -hmm. Um, so some of the things you're, you're needing, always needing, and I'll go through that list, liquid bleach, liquid laundry detergent, scoopable and non-scoopable kitty litter, paper towels, trash bags, wet cat and dog food, and gift cards to retailers that obviously carry Mm -hmm. cleaning supplies and pet supplies. Mm -hmm. So write that down. (laughs) <laughs> rewind write it down and then of course other helpful items you have the six foot leashes uh the kongs dog collars and narge uh narge large nyla bones as well yeah that's awesome yeah. I, I love all that so pretty easy pretty easy Zumi to donate wants to add treats dog treats treats to yeah you went through a whole bag you since you've been here <laughs> yeah, dude you don't have any favorites <laughs> any beef jerky treats probably go over well Jer- Ooh, let's jerky go. treats are, yes. are the hit they are the hit <laughs> so you know i want to go ahead and wrap this up i know you guys have a facebook and instagram um so check them out there i'm sure you guys have cute pictures and you're up to date like people or people pets that need to be adopted yep. Um, so tell me one last thing, you know, why should people get involved with specifically the League of Animal Welfare? Why do people need to get off this interview right now and go hit you up right away? What, what, what sets you kind of apart in, um, you know, why should people get more involved with the pet community? Come on, Ronnie. I, I, was, I, <laughs> I would say that my favorite, my favorite thing about the league that I think is different than other shelters that I've worked with is um, the community of mm. it. I think that both amongst our staff and amongst the volunteers and um, seeing that form with the different programs that we're adding as well. There's even small communities within that community. Mm-hmm. Um, but seeing that we are in a dog crisis right now, um, these dogs are sitting for longer than ever. We really need people out there um, showing them attention. Cats as well. Um, cats are, are, we're all struggling in the shelter world. Well, so. well, and I know why, I know what it is. It's that stereotype. Mm-hmm. And, it, and I'll get all rowdy about it, about cats. <laughs> but what, what is that? Like, what, are, are you I trying mean, to break that stereotype? Do you find yourself that, coming across that? Yes, definitely. I mean, I, I, I see that as well as the pit bull stereotype. There, there's stereotypes yeah. all over with animals. I think it's just an extension of our, our stereotypes of, of people as well. So, 
yeah, trying to trying to fight that all the time. We have people of all walks of life that come out. Well, thank God and, for and you guys. have hearts for animals. Yeah, kind of amen. A... <gasps> Zumi's been in our shelter for three years. Zumi can be yeah. adopted, right? For three yes. years, he hasn't had a home, and the only attention he gets is from staff and volunteers. So that's why you should come volunteer, because this sweet boy yes. needs someone to pay him attention. Aww. And he's been so good this whole time. So good. Literally. And he, it's snowing. It's snowing in the in the yes. studio, so yes. which, that's good. So, Devin, is there anything else that you want to you tell the community before we sign off? We see 4,000 animals every single mm. year, um, and we can't do that without our community. Right. In terms of adopters, volunteers, um donors for sure again we have to raise a million and a half dollars every year people even if you, if you are not in a place to do any of that even something as simple as sharing a post on facebook we just had a dog that had been with us for three years who um was adopted yesterday tuesday sunday Sunday was adopted on yeah. Sunday after three years uh, because people shared his story on Facebook. So uh, s as small an act as that, if you cannot adopt right now, um, if you do not have the funds to donate, we understand, but any kind of advocacy makes a huge difference. Mm. So, mm. Well, you heard it here first, guys. League of Animal Welfare really doing things in the community. Um, please get involved. Like I said, donate, volunteer, follow them on social media. Um, do bottle feeding. What the yeah. heck? Maybe start lower. That's yeah, I don't. I'm gonna I start. Like it though. I'm gonna start there. You know what I mean? Um, foster for the holidays. There's all kinds of different opportunities. Um, we'll have all the information in our article along with this interview. Um, thank you guys so much for what you do. Um, for advocating, for having the passion for the pet community, and quite frankly, for saving many, many pet lives. We appreciate you, and uh, thanks for coming by the studio. Zoomy? <laughs> Can we do any high fives or tricks or anything? He does no tricks. Yeah. Uh -oh. Yeah, uh -oh. Are you going to speak? He's like, speak? absolutely not. Yeah. Speak. <laughs> no. Come here. Come here. We can do that. Can you sit? Can you sit? Can you shake? Yeah. Yes. Another one. Yeah. Now we speak. Speak. Oh, speak. <laughs> Let's go. Good job, Zoomy. Yes, that was like a whisper. Right, yeah, yeah, inside voice. We call that. Oh, oh with the waving now. Good oh, yep, yep. Give me that treat. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you guys so much. And uh, thanks for joining me in uh, my table of discussions. And we'll see you next time. Loveland Magazine TV videos are brought to you by the generous support of move to love one dot com.